so today we're going to talk about a topic that every billionaire in the world is working on and that's how to live forever and the question is can we even do that um of course the very obvious things are you got to be healthy we got to live longer and healthier and we got to figure out how to extend aging and maybe even reverse or prevent aging some people consider aging to be a disease that doesn't actually have to happen so if you start there the first thing and we're going to dive into some unique concepts that maybe haven't been applied to extended extended human longevity before um but the very basic and universal one is you know how do we stay healthy how do we slow down aging and the easiest thing we can say there is to understand how you deal with your habits and your choices you know it's very easy you can picture yourself the time that you're having that treat you know that that candy or that thing from starbucks or the whatever thing uh that is truly a treat for you were you alone you know were you is it that time where you truly felt free uh where you be- believed you were invincible like you just dropped the kids off somewhere and now you're alone you're going to go pick up that treat that you maybe wouldn't have when they're with you you know these are the types of things we do because it's when we feel like nobody's watching that we feel like we're invincible and what we forget is that somebody is always watching your body is going to punish you for your choices of now in the future diseases take time so w- the little that you you know think you can get away with which becomes an incremental which becomes compounded which turns into chronic disease or gut dysbiosis or whatever it may be you have to remember starts with you knowing that as equal as there's reward in refraining there's also punishment in choosing so you have to constantly catch yourself and make those right choices uh they're equally as powerful and the power is yours the power is yours to decide so having said that you know you can very easily do things that you don't think of like the immune system can be distracted by over easy by overeating it causes literally confusion to the immune system and it causes it to misfire and then all of a sudden you can get sick and things start to compound and compile on themselves so following the basic principles of what we already know to be the right choices for longevity and health as long as you do those things you're doing your job but there's a different context that I wanted to talk about and that is this whole concept of living forever perhaps there's a different way to look at it where it is possible scientifically theoretically in practical terms and application of it um is this actually something that humans are meant to do well what we understand is that humans are meant to live at their optimal about 150 years uh many people have said this people like dave asprey said that they're going to try and live to 180 some people say 200 but science says that if we do everything right we should get to 150 and that's the extent to which this equipment you're looking at and that you also walk around in is designed to live and tell if it's optimal and there's nothing preventing it from reaching its full potential meanwhile if you break things down we are 1 billionth matter so this thing that we're talking about this body this physical form only 1 billionth of what you see here is what we actually perceive as physical matter the rest which is commonly referred to as empty space is actually energy in your previous episode we talked about breaking down the human cell down to its utmost you know beginnings and particles that are the before the atom before the neutron before the electron like break it way down and you have these particles these uh, strings that actually are vibrating constantly in their forms of energy So science already agrees with this. We don't talk about it commonly or understand it or put it into practice, but we are 1 1 billionth the matter that we see. The rest is energy. That's what we're made up of. We already know that energy cannot be destroyed. This is scientifically proven. It can't create it, you can't destroy it. And if this is what makes up the the rest of that not 1 1 billionth but everything else that doesn't die it's energy and it was never born it existed before we got here what what was created was this physical form 
Uh, and that's the thing, the context is what I'm saying. Every, what we're thriving and striving towards is this physical form staying on its two feet for longer. We don't know what happens when we die, but if you do the sign, if you look at the science behind it, well, if we are energy and we die and only one billionth of us was physical form, what happens to the rest? Where does it go? Because it doesn't die. We are science already tells us that. Just as much as science tells us doesn't, we don't know what happens after we die. We very clearly know what happens to what we are made up of, which is energy. Is it continues to survive and goes back into the fabric of the universe? So how do you harness that? What does that mean? If the question is how do we live forever? This is one possible context and answer to that question. If you take all of the energy that makes you up the light, the light energy, it's 10,000 times the light of the sun. The sun, which many light years away, even on a hot day on this planet, is too much. That's how powerful that light energy is, that there's places on this planet where you can't handle how much you're receiving from millions of, or sorry, actually, to be honest, I don't know the answer, but many, many, many light years away, whether that's thousands or tens of thousands or millions of light years away. I don't know, but we know it's far. And we know the distance is far enough that it is utterly shocking that there are places on this planet that the energy and light of that sun can actually cause you harm and burn your, literally give you sunburn or give you exhaustion or dehydration. Meanwhile, we, our human form, each one of us on this planet contains 10,000 times the light that the sun produces to, to cause that level of heat that we receive here. We are literally infinite black holes. We are these gravitational fields that are infinite in number that contain that amount of energy in this form that you see. We are literally containing ourselves, the physical form that we are. The only explanation is something along the lines of a black hole that is so dense in itself that the gravitational force that it creates absorbs everything, including itself. And that's who we then become. There was this, and this explains why, if we are, as we are, I'm 170 pounds, and you know, one one billionth of that is matter, where is this energy? And if it's 10,000 times the light of the sun, where is it? Why are we not all blinded with almost 8 billion of us on this planet, 8 billion times 10,000 times the power of the sun walking around this planet every day, we should all be blinded. And the, the earth should be melting from heat, but we aren't because we contain it within ourselves. They, and this is all, uh, uh, these are, this is not me uh, taking a bunch of theories and putting them together. This is quantum science that talks about this stuff. You know, quantum physicists are studying this and trying to understand how to unravel who we are. And the only real explanation right now is black holes, that level of condensing of energy that we are probably also doing. So beyond that, there's no weapon, there's no force on this planet that contains that explosive energetic power that we have inside of us. And there are 8 billion of us approximately on this planet. So just imagine the power. So the path of life can potentially extend beyond the physical form that we're thinking longevity meant, is meant to be packaged in. The, the context we're always looking at is in this form. As I said, Science talks about this form being potentially able to live to 150 years old. So human, the human body at its utmost top efficiency, if, if it was used at that level of efficiency, as it, at its optimal sort of environment, uh, nutrition, you know, physical movement, can live to 150 years. This is what the scientific community says. That's looking for incremental change. That's looking for how do I get from 120 where there's people in, in the Andes, there's people in Japan, there's people in some of the blue zones that have reached those ages. Uh, in fact, right now we're doing some work on a number of centenarians, people that have lived over 100 to understand genetically, how do they get there? What are they doing differently or how are they wired differently? So our challenge is we're looking for this incremental change. How do we get from 90 to 100, from 100 to 100, 110, 110 to 120? And in that incremental change, we're really limited our thinking on what we could potentially do to live forever. 
there are civilizations prior to us that were much more advanced than we are today. Uh, there's things that they did that we still cannot even conceive the potential of. For example, you look at the pyramids in Egypt and how is it possible if you truly research and dive deep into the construction engineering be behind them and not just, you know, ooing and aahing at how beautiful they are. But if you try to understand and do the math, you can Google it. it we don't know how to do this today. We don't have the equipment, the science, the know-how. We can't do it today. Uh, they did it then. So they were more advanced than us, at least in that skill, but if who knows what else. It is believed the only explanation is that they've been able, they were able to harness the power of sound energy. So with sound uh, and understanding that we are all frequency, again, if you break it down to quantum physics, the very minutia of ourselves, like the, beginning, the very smallest component you could break it down to, into is a string, a, a vibrating a frequency source. Uh, which then you know sends information through sound to every other part of that cell and then again to the body and even interbody between other people which is why we have things like intuition uh, that sound we already know can be harnessed today uh, there's fractal sort of designs that we look at that can be driven by sound there's patterns that can be driven by sound there's patterns that can be matched to various frequencies to understand how they visually represent represent themselves but we are able to do this in sort of this limited uh, scope of those type of designs and moving sand, et cetera. The same science and theory should have been able to move mountains if you knew how to harness it. And so what we're saying is that this is the time when religion brought forth the thought of eternal life. Uh, it brought forth the thought that something comes after death in this physical form. So, and when you think about ancient cultures, and this is why I'm talking about them, because everything we now believe about religion and uh, kind of call it eternal life and reincarnation and all these various thoughts, these are not new thoughts. These are ancient thoughts that we brought forward. Uh, and we now understand we're, well, we're starting to apply the science of them to understand if they're possible and how are they possible. So, this is a time, if you think about that explanation of internal life, that we're no longer in our physical form. We're in a very different form. What that form that is, we don't know. That's where we go back to the very first thing I said, that we now know scientifically how much of us comprises the physical form versus the energy that we're created from. And as I said, it is one one billionth. So we now start to take sort of two and two and understand that this physical form uh, that we're trying to live forever in or extend the life of maybe is temporary and it, it is limiting our scope and thinking and, and getting to how we can potentially live forever. And this is why I said in the very beginning, I want to talk about a different context. There's multiple theories, multiple thoughts on how you can get there, but this is the theory that I thought we should talk about today, a context shift. And what does it mean for me as an individual or you as an individual to live forever? It may not mean that we're limited in the scope of our thinking to this physical form. Maybe there's something else. So we have perhaps this thought of living forever is a gift that we already have. We're just thinking of it in the wrong context. We're limiting it, limiting it to, to how do we stay in this form forever versus how do we, as this thinking, this personality, uh, this sort of soul and spirit, who we think we are on the inside, if we were to peel the layers away, how does that live forever? The memories that we have, the experiences that we have, um, you know, our, our life force, which is not our physical form, you know, there's something inside us that we feel that we are ourselves is beyond our physical form and form. And perhaps if we focus on that, there is a way to live forever because we are energy. And if we're energy, we already know energy doesn't die. So here's where you get into this sort of actualization of this thought that if we can take the promise of eternal energy, which we already know to be true, nobody will deny that. Energy is eternal. We don't know how it started and we don't know how to end it. And everything but one one billionth of who we are is energy. So if that's true, then this promise of eternal energy or sorry, internal life 
can potentially be driven through energy. And that actualization is how do you bring and connect that to this physical form? So if I bring it full circle, I'm not saying that, you know, what everyone else is saying that, how do we get this body to live longer? I'm also not saying that my explanation of what does already live forever, our energy is a limit to how we have to think. I'm saying, how do we take this, which we already know to be true, that energy doesn't die, and that is a majority of what we're made of, and the physical form does die, how do we connect the two? So if we truly want to live forever, as we are in the, in the context that you see, the, the answer to me seems to be, take what we know is already internal within us, and connect it to what is, has morbidity. That science we don't yet understand. Uh, there are some scary things going on in this world where literally today there's research being done on the transfer of consciousness. You know, how do you take how you think and how you feel and store that and implant it into another physical form? That science literally has been worked on today. Um, you've seen it, anything that you've seen in a movie or TV show is going to happen. There's somebody working on it, and that's why it was presented to you in a movie or a TV show. It's you know slowly whispering what the future may potentially look like if the science pulls through, which these things are very well funded and potentially pulling through. So there's a whole other way to look at it where you know consciousness can be transferred, but what if you can maintain your own consciousness in this physical form? And there's another way to think about eternal life other than just disease and health and illness. And the, we, when we think about eternal life, we're usually thinking about avoiding death. That's the answer to us to eternal life. How do I not die? As opposed to how do you take what's already internal within us and extend that into our physical form and allow that to continue? So I have another thought for you. There is a research study that was done where there was two groups of people that were given milkshakes. And in those milkshakes, they were told that these milkshakes uh, were of a certain variety, uh, that they were very healthy, one of the groups. The other group was told that they are just a normal milkshake. They were both, by the way, of the healthy variety. Call them more a protein shake than a milkshake. One of the two groups was told, however, that it was truly a milkshake. An interesting thing happened. The group that was told the truth that these were actually very healthy uh, drinks had a very healthy outcome. If you measure their insulin and their ghrelin, ghrelin, which is a hunger hormone, they were fairly balanced afterwards speaking to this healthy experience. No sugar insulin spike, no ghrelin, ghrelin being produced to continue uh, striving for satiety and looking for nutrition. Uh, they reached an outcome that was re relevant to what they took in a healthy outcome it spoke to what they ate it was obvious that what they ate actually truly was healthy the group that was told that this healthy drink was a milkshake had a crazy insulin response had a crazy ghrelin response which means just the belief that they were eating something or taking something that was unhealthy even with their limited knowledge, these were not biohackers, these were not uh, functional medicine doctors that understood, you know, what ghrelin is, and what insulin is, just the belief that they were eating something unhealthy started to trigger the domino effect of all the unhealthy things that you want to avoid. And so they had that insulin spike, and they had that ghrelin spike, and they started to feel the things that you would feel as if you just drank 30, 40, 50 grams of sugar mixed with a bunch of fat, and all these things that you're not supposed to eat food in that way. Let me tell you something else before I get to the point. There's an experiment that was done where fleas, by the way, fleas can jump three feet. This tiny flea, we all know how big a flea is with the tiny body and legs that it has, it can literally jump 36 inches, three feet in the air. So there was a study that was done where fleas were put into a jar. And these fleas in the jar, obviously they jump, you know, if you stimulate them, bother them, they jump. And in the beginning, they would jump and hit the lid. 
They would literally hit the lid. And, you know, their, their obvious habit is to jump 36 inches, three feet high, you know, based on their bodies. I don't even understand how that's possible. That's like us jumping hundreds of feet in the air and they would land safely without damaging their limbs, etc. But they started to hit the lid, the lid, because of course the lid was only a few inches high, you know, blocking that 36 inch vertical. After some time, they started to jump to a point where they just barely hit the lid. They didn't actually hit it. They didn't make contact. They got close, but they didn't actually make contact. The really crazy thing that happened, so they developed this habit, their sort of their uh, limitations or their thinking on what's normal changed, and they now jumped just shy of the lid. That became their new reality. The interesting thing is the children of these fleas that were born within their that environment instinctively jumped to that same new height. They did not go through the process of jumping, trying to jump 36 inches and then hitting the ceiling and, you know, collapsing like their parents did. They just started at that level and they stayed there. So they learned the habits of their parents instinctively. And when they took them out of the jar, the children continued to jump at that level that new height whatever few inches that was and why i bring this up and why i think it's so important is because we limit our goals by what we're told is possible which then leads us to believe what is possible so eventually that flea out of that can or that jar is going to one day jump a little higher maybe one of them and then the other ones will potentially learn what's possible. And then they'll, they'll also start to do that. Just like, you know, we know this, th there's a famous story about the one minute mile where nobody can run a mile under a minute. And all of a sudden somebody did it, you know, many decades ago, and then somebody else did it. And then everybody started doing it. And so we limit ourselves by what we believe is possible. We believe what's possible, but what we're told is possible. And we're often so much more worried than what people are going to think or not fitting in, you know, or, you know, not following the status quo, quo and what we're told to follow than what we, our intuition tells us what, what more we could potentially be doing. We often follow those things more and then we don't get the full benefit of what our potential is. And this is where I say, even in the question, you know, of, can we live forever? Or how long can we live? You know, what can we actually do? How healthy can we be? How much longevity can we have? There's civilizations before us that have done more than we've ever done. And that wisdom and intelligence has been taken away. And now we operate at a level where we think that this is the, we think we're the best. We're the, we think that we're, the, that we're the best the world has ever seen. And so everything we do in terms of human potential is based on what we believe maximum capacity is. Uh, and if anyone speaks of a higher capacity, it almost seems like quack science. Well, in everything we are doing in our known history of what we can remember, go back and you know that we're doing better than what we used to do before. So if we know there's room for improvement and we can see in our own history that we now live longer, uh, that we now, well, we, we now have the first generations that are starting to live less, uh, but and we also have more disease than before, but longevity, the actual age is longer than it's ever been. We're bigger, stronger, healthier. We have a better economy. We have better technology. So we know that things are happening today that a generation ago were not possible, that three generations ago weren't believed were possible. So what else is possible? What else can we do that we right now believe we can't, where we're not right now told we can't? And if you know that there is something in you that is internal and that thing that is internal makes up the majority of what constitutes your body and only one billionth of what you are is what you're focused on, what you believe is, is who you are. The rest of it is something else. And that something else is an internal force. It is energy. So put those two thoughts together is all I'm telling you that don't be the flea in the jar, right? Don't believe that 
just because there's a limit that's been put that that is the limit understand there were people before you that achieved more just like that flea don't be like the people drinking the milkshake that just because they believe it's true they cause their body to change you know they they truly could have made themselves sick if they went down that path for longer and longer and longer so we potentially can do a lot more we already see you know every day now in science what's happening that it's moving so fast even a year ago you hear of something today a year ago it didn't seem possible so take those two thoughts with you and in this quest for eternal life or even just a healthier longer life even just having a good tail end of your life and having the longevity and vitality you had when you were 20 or 25 carry on into your hundreds, 110, 120, 130, which we already know is possible. We just don't know what the limit is. And we're afraid to ask that question because we're afraid to ask any question of that sort that takes us out of the norm of the status quo. Do that. Go ahead and do that and assume that maybe we can live to 200 or 300. And what would it take? Reverse engineer what it takes to do that. Then you'll potentially reach that goal. The first person that crossed that one minute mile wanted to do it. They only got there because they believed they could and reverse engineered the path to get there. What training did they need? How fast did they have to move? What fuel did they require to recover, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So that's what I leave you with that, you know, what we believe of in terms of longevity is how long can we keep this context that limited thinking alive, that this context, this body, this head to toe, can I make this thing last? There's something inside us that's already built to last, right? How do we harness that? Let's, let's look at a different kind of technology. How do we harness that? And let's let that be the goal or something in between. You know, there's, there's something more to us than just the one billionth of us that makes up the matter in the physical form. And in this, just take the lesson with you that limiting your thinking is going to limit your outcome. Limiting your, sorry, limiting your beliefs is going to limit your outcome. So have the big lofty goal and the big lofty beliefs that get you to where you want to be. Nobody is stopping you but yourself. But your, you know, pride, ego, insecurity. Those are the things that would stop you. Relieve yourself of those three evils and there is no limit to what you can do.